What up? This is Derp here, coming at you with another video about Dark and Darker and all the troubles we're going through. Uh, this one is going to be hopefully a little bit quicker. It is about all of the misinformation that's going on. Um, it's going to go over some Reddit articles, uh, some YouTube posts, some Korean media articles, and the stuff that's being said on Blind and the leaked information from Nexon itself. Let me get right into it. So. What I want to go over in this video is pretty simple. There is a lot of misleading claims being thrown around by large streamers, YouTubers, Reddit posts, the Korean media, and even Nexon. My job right now is to try to help people sift through this nonsense and see what's really going on. I'm going to be focusing a lot on some of the stuff that the YouTube, YouTuber and streamer Kira and OnePeg have been using as sources as well as some Reddit posts and media coverage that they point to and just the information that everybody kind of seems to be pulling from. It seems to be like this shared pool of information that people are citing and using as reference, but they're not really questioning it too much or looking into the validity or even really looking outside of that for what other information might corroborate this story or uh, disprove these theories, right? Because that's all in, all of this stuff is. It's all unproven theory speculation at this point. Uh, but first up, what I want to get into is the Reddit post by user twig1544. It got about 150 upvotes and a bunch of shares on Reddit. Um, yeah, let's just dive right into it. So if you go to it, it's rather long. I'm going to save you the time that it would take for you guys to read this whole thing. Um, but it's pretty long, and it's pretty in-depth. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that they cite here is kind of not super relevant, and I don't think he has a strong grasp of a lot of what he has read in, uh, like, the Trade Secrets Act, and then he uses, like, um, American Trade Secrets Acts, like right here, this is a US code. Like, this is not relevant at all. There's a lot of stuff in here that's just straight up not relevant or already has been disproven by other people. And he kind of goes into it claiming, as it claiming it as fact. But yeah, so first of all, the dude claim, initially claimed to be a training lawyer. I don't know what that is. That's not really a term. Um, and Kira cites him or them as such. In his vid in Kira's video, um, but since Kira's video has been pointed out and got a lot of attention, that link to this art and it links to this article, uh, the post has since been edited to now say that they're not a lawyer. The original poster is not a lawyer. Um, it goes as far as to say, first and foremost, this is not concerning trolling or hating on Dark and Darker or anything like that. I am not a lawyer. I have never played Dark and Darker, and I have absolutely no horse in the race. So right there, it states that they're not a lawyer. That means that this is all the opinion of an untrained person. So yeah, they claim to be unbiased. Before edits, there was a claim that this person was an expert, saying that they were a training lawyer, whatever that is. Uh, some people went as far as to say that OP is a lawyer, that the original poster was a lawyer. We don't know if that's true because I haven't talked to this person. They haven't claimed anything. Um, but claiming to be a training lawyer or being some kind of expert on law and then going back and editing it, saying that you're not a lawyer and you're not an expert on law is genuinely suspicious, at least as far as I'm concerned. And it also could be illegal. Um, giving legal advice without being a lawyer is in the United States is illegal. You can't do that. Um, impersonating a lawyer is also illegal. Um, you just can't do that kind of stuff. So this is actually kind of dangerous to spread this information. Anybody who's claiming to be a lawyer and then going back on that claim is somebody who you just kind of don't want to listen to to begin with. Um, and again, they claim to be unbiased and only stating their opinion. Um, they claim make that claim throughout the whole post. Right here they say I'm writing this from the perspective of a court. So they are the perspective of a court looking at the validity of a DMCA. Regardless of how I feel about Nexon, Iron Mace, Dark and Darker is a game. This is how I think the evidence should be looked at. This, was at. this part was added. This is edited. 
Um, at first, they claim to be, from what I understand, they claim to be a lawyer. I could be wrong about that, about them claiming to be a lawyer, but Kira cites them as a training lawyer. Kira might have been misunderstanding what's going on, but from what I can understand, that the, the post was edited and there was, there is people in the comments section claiming that this person stated that they were a lawyer. So, or some, or a lawyer in training maybe going to law school, who, who actually knows, um, unless you saw the original post, which if you did, I would love to hear it in the comments below. Um, if you have any insight to this post and how it was before it was edited, I would love to hear about it. Um, because they possibly did something illegal here. I'm not going to like report them or anything, but like, that's just something you, it's super suspicious. Um, and then they say here, I, if you feel that a comparison I make such as a two piece, two piece of art or similar, uh, know that I think that a court likely would disagree with you. They claim to know this is a basically a blatant claim that they understand legal the legal systems at least in the United States because the DMCA is being filed in the United States um, but this is also a leading claim you can't really state an opinion in a matter that looks like it's fact or force your opinion on other people while also trying to be room to be neutral that's just kind of not how arguments work and it's not the way that you I would I would personally go about staying neutral in a case like this um, but look, let's look into their claims about the DMCA. So, this whole section about the DMCA right here is basically nonsense. Um, this first part, and then it goes to some law that literally doesn't mean anything that I'll get into later. But then it goes very deeply into the DMCA. Um, a lot of the stuff that he mentions here has already been refuted by Iron Mace, um, and what he says is almost not applicable to the DMCA itself, because he's acting like the, the DMCA is a lawsuit, and DMCAs are not lawsuits at all. There is no legal case, there's not even an ongoing legal battle in the United States right now. A DMCA is just a takedown notice to block the publication of a product or piece of information. All of the information that that the person go that Twig1544 gives out is applicable to a court case if it was a very specific type of court case, but this is not that. This is a DMCA that then goes into a copyright slash IP case, right? This is a completely different type of court case than he talks about in this article. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but I will go over some of it. Um, yeah, it's maybe important to a lawsuit later on down the line, but as far as the DMCA is concerned and a copyright claim or even a copyright law case, like, it doesn't hold any bearing on, on that kind of case. It just doesn't. Like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, since this person doesn't seem to understand what a DMCA actually is, it leads me to question their understanding of the law themselves. Um, I, to be perfectly up forward, I've sent and received DMCAs. I'm an author. Um, I had a group. I was the leader of a group for quite a while that actually helped other lawyer, uh, other other authors uh, get plagiarized work work taken off of Amazon and off of a website called Royal Road. I'm in no way a lawyer or an expert, but I do know a little bit more than the average person about how DMCA's work just because I've sent them, right? I've sent them, I've received them. I've had people who plagiarized my work send me DMCA saying that they owned my book. Um, so I kind of know how this stuff plays out. Um, especially with big corporations like Amazon and, and either, even websites like Royal Road, right? Um, and I assume that Steam kind of functions in a similar way to Amazon where they take DMCA's very seriously. Uh, they don't want to get sued later on down the line because they have financial stake. Even if they're not held liable for damages by ignoring a DMCA, they still have to defend themselves, right? Which costs money and lawyers and stuff. So they don't want to get involved. Uh, pretty much everything that they link to is a link to Cornell Law. Um, 
fighting codes that I think they confused the Trade Secrets Act of Illinois with the Trade Secrets Act of Korea because they're two completely separate things. Um, I'll pull this up real quick. Um, but yeah, this is from Cornell and it's Article 18 U.S. Code 183.9 definitions, um, which is cool. But this is all Korean trade or U.S. Trade Secrets Act stuff, and gives out definitions of what we call trade secrets in the U.S. Uh, the Trade Secrets Act case is Korean. There's a tr Korean trade Trade Secrets Act, which is completely different. It has nothing to do with the United States Trade Secrets Act. And the case that is being prepared in the U.S. is a Copyright Act case, not a Trade Secret Act. So this literally has n absolutely nothing to do. It's, I mean, like, it's cool information, but it has nothing to do with a copyright case at all. Like, there's no bearing on a copyright case from the Trade Secrets Act in America. Um, that's just not how it's litigated, at least to the best of my, best of my knowledge. Um, and then most of what he covers in the DMC has already been explained or contested by Iron Mace with proof and examples. You can go see for yourself. Um, I have a whole video about this. Um, it's like an hour and a half long that goes into a lot of detail. Um, go check it out. I'll have the link in, link in the descri description. Um, and then furthermore, there's already several games that are already playable and which have existed for a while that are extremely close to Dark and Dark. Uh, there was a video, a link posted actually in this Reddit post. So if you go down to like the first comment right here, and you open up the... There's a chivalry, chivalry mod called Random Dungeon. And if you look up the gameplay here, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but what does this look like? Hmm... Hmm. Can anyone help? What is it? I mean, pretty similar to Dark and Darker. It even has the same weapon. Look, here's the horseman's uh, horseman's pick. Same combat style, everything. So, the argument that P Dark and Darker couldn't have been made without P3 is kind of erroneous. It's stupid, um, and it's been disproven over and over again. So I'm not going to get into it too much. So, why do they think this affects Iron Mace? Honestly, because he doesn't really know what he's talking about. Uh, they cite a court case of Pepsi versus Redmond, but what they fail to mention is that this case was sent to appeals court. It was also, first of all, it's a United States case, Trade Secrets Act case, that has literally nothing to do with the Korean Trade Secrets Act, again. Um, so they're misinterpreting where these court cases are are happening and what laws they're actually using to sue um, or press criminal cases against Iron Mace. Um, so he cites a United States Trade Secrets Act case of Pepsi versus Redmond. He fails to mention that that case went to appeals court. Um, there was an injunction placed against a man who wanted to leave Pepsi and go work for Redmond. Um, but it, all, it had no, little to do with the employee's actual insider information because the employee was scouted and poached from Pepsi with the expectation that he would bring trade secrets with him to Redmond. Now, Redmond is Quaker Oats. Quaker Oats owns Gatorade. So, the important thing to understand about this case specifically is that Gatorade, essentially, was poaching employees from Pepsi with the express intention of taking their trade secrets away and learning their distribution routes, their sales tactics, and their pricing structure. Um, they essentially planned to steal trade secrets and damage Pepsi by brain draining them of talent and taking all the people who actually developed their pricing structures and stuff and hiring them to go work for, for Gatorade. Um, and the only reason why, and this is confirmed by the judge, one of the main reasons factors in the case is that Quaker was already a dominant competitor in the beverage industry. Uh, they owned Gatorade, right? Uh, they were, and they were specifically targeting information that Pepsi held 
and tr actual trade secrets, right? They were they were purposefully targeting these people with the express intent of damaging Pepsi. So whether or not you know this is even relevant to Korean law because it's not, but it also doesn't match with what's going on because this was a this was two massive corporations. One was being poached of in, of people with the express intention of stealing secrets and stuff. So it's a completely different case, just entirely. There's not very, really any, like on the surface level, it seems like it might be similar, but it's very, 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 very different. Um, and beyond that, none of that's even relevant to Korean law. That was a case between two US companies and US, two US courts, and has nothing to do with the Korean trade secrets case. Uh, it just doesn't. They're not the same. And another thing that is kind of often misunderstood here is that there's actually three legal cases at play here. And they all have very different objectives, vastly different outcomes, and differences in how they're tried in court. And a lot of people are mixing up this information and saying whatever they want. And they don't have a lot of information or they don't, or they're misunderstanding the information that has been provided. Um, so the US trade secrets cases literally have nothing to do with, with copyright, and they have nothing to do with Korean trade secrets cases either. So they are just completely different things. The first case is the US copyright case. That is a copyright law case, uh, an intellectual property rights case, versus Nex it's Nexon versus Iron Maze. That hasn't even been started. It was, or it hasn't even been filed. It was started with the DMCA takedown notice. So the way that that works is a company or individual who owns property or claims to own proper, like an intellectual property, um, in this case Nexon, uh, they filed copyrights and then they sent out a takedown notice to the D they sent out the DMCA takedown notice to Steam to have it removed, have Dark and Darker removed from Steam, and they ha there's a situation where they have to wait. A sp a specific amount of time and in that window iron mace can counter the claim with proof and then it starts a new timer where nexon has to counter their counter with a lawsuit and before it actually goes to court a judge can take a look at this case and decide whether it's even worth trying or not because they're going to take a look at the copyright files themselves the copyright filings and see if they're even valid. So this court case, the copyright case, might get thrown out by a judge before it even goes to trial. Because the US copyright is subjective to a lot of different rules that kind of determine whether a the copyrights themselves will hold, right? Just because you filed, a, I could go file a copyright for Funko Pop, right? That I just call something different, right? Just because I filed the, the copyright doesn't mean that it's going to be upheld. Um, they go into place e immediately where they're filed, but you have to defend the copyright claim and you have to press the copyright claim in order for it to actually be relevant, right? And since this is the first time that Nexon's copyright is being pressed by Iron Mace, it might fail immediately. We don't know that. The likelihood of that, I'm not going to speculate. Um, it depends on the judge, it depends on their understanding of what's at stake, it depends on their understanding of what video games are, it depends on a lot of stuff. I'm not going to really speculate on that, if I do it'll be in an, another video. But yeah, that's the first case, it's the US Copyright case, it's not a Trade Secrets Act case. The US case is not a Trade Secrets Act case, can't say that enough, enough. it's a copyright case. Uh, the, then you have the Korean Trade Secrets Act case of Nexon versus Mr. A slash Mr. Choi. That is ongoing and active. So that's already a case that's being carried out in Korea. We don't know what the outcome of it is. And then you have the Korean Trade Secrets Act case of Nexon versus Iron Mace. The investigation is still going on. So it's kind of in the starting phases, but it has not yet been filed. They haven't even, as, to the best of my knowledge, they haven't even filed the Trade Secrets Act case against Nexon, I mean against Iron Mace in Korea. So we don't have any information on that case yet because it doesn't exist. 
All we know is that Iron Mace got raided and they started an investigation. What the results of that are, we have no idea. So claiming to know anything about that right now, if you're not, if, if you're outside of the lawyers of Nexon, the lawyers of Iron Mace or the police, like it's just not, it's all speculation because it's not filed. There's no proof. There's no, there's no receipts, right? We don't have the receipts. So I'm not even going to acknowledge the rest of that discord post because 90% of what it says is just completely irrelevant. So the next thing I want to look at is what the Korean media has been stating, what's been happening on, on blind, which is a social media, it's an anonymous social media platform for corporate employees in Korea. Um, it's so that they can kind of talk crap about their employers and bring stuff to light in a anonymous setting. And you have to send in your company email address to confirm that you actually work for the company you say you work for. So there is some kind of vetting that goes on there. And then there's also been insider information using quote, you know, air quotes here and air quotes leaks, internal leaks from Nexon. Um, and first off, like the first thing I want to say is take everything you hear from a U.S. source, a Korean source, me, YouTubers, anybody, uh, take everything that they say with a grain of salt, especially if they can't show receipts, right? If they don't have any proof of what they're saying or any validation to their claims, just don't, personally, I don't believe it, right? I'll, I'll take what they say and then I'll go look it up and try to verify it myself. If I can't find any verification, it doesn't exist, right? Like, it's just not true. Um, so, unless they can show proof and they have receipts, I would just tread lightly with all of the stuff that's going on because a lot of it is unsubstantiated and has no verification at all. Um, and here's a really good example of that. Like, I, I love Kira's channel. I think I've been watching Kira for a long time. I think that they, the service that they provide and the entertainment that they pro, that they provide is great. I highly recommend their channel. But this article that they link to is kind of, in me, very indicative of the entire situation that's going on right now. Um, it's a Korean article from a financial uh, website in in Korea. So. What this article is about is basically it's basically a hit piece on Iron Mace saying that they're taking taking money from former Nexon CEOs and uh, stealing insider information for the benefit of these evil CEOs that used to work at Nexon, right? Um, and it's just none of it's true, right? So. The article itself is, is a huge nothing burger. Uh, it's also been edited since its time of publication. Um, but a quick rundown is that they claim that former employees of Nexon, including the former CEO of Nexon, invested heavily into Iron Mace and therefore must have some kind of evil intentions to hurt Nexon. Um, in reality, the former executives had already previously worked with the team at, that is now Iron Mace. And we're all on friendly relations, right? They were they were buddies. They had worked together and they were kind of friends. So when Iron Mace approached them for funding, which they did, uh, they gave Iron Mace 400 bucks each. It was two, C two former executives of Nexon gave Iron Mace $400 each. It was like 500,000 won, which is 400 bucks. 400 bucks. And it was exchange in exchange for 0.25% of the company at the time, which is now valued at 0.18% of the company. Um, the article itself literally, literally states that the CEOs basically felt bad for the guys at Iron Mace and wanted to give them a little cash to help them keep the lights on and get some food and whatever else they needed, right? Um, this is before they started raising funding for themselves by themselves. And then, according to the article itself, there are claims that Nexon is trying to extort Iron Mace for the actual copyright of Dark and Darker. Um, I have it, an excerpt here. 
So, quote, Iron Mace recently claimed we are proud and Nexon has tried to placate us. There is no spe specific explanation, but it was accepted as a nuance that Nexon suggested that if the copyright for Dark and Darker is handed over to Nexon, that they will withdraw their case. That is huge. That is a huge accusation. But they, it, where they put this in the article is just kind of sweeping it under the rug and they kind of hide it. Um, and then under that, they say that Nexon's position is that Iron Mace claim that they tried to appease them is not true, yet there is no evidence to the contrary. So, I put the quotes in the wrong spot. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's no evidence to the contrary. There's no evidence that they tried to get the copyright for Dark and Darker, and there's no evidence that uh, they didn't, right? So this entire part is speculation, but it's also kind of dam damning for both parties. Um, more so Nexon, in my opinion. And then, according to the article itself, once again, tucked away at the, at the very, very end of the article, it straight up says, there is little evidence of foul play by investors or, or Iron Mace to steal Dark and Darker from Nexon. Uh, it says, It seems clear that CEO Jung Woo Young and CEO Jung Sang Won, sorry, terribly butchering those names, had a friendly attitude towards the former juniors of the from the company. This is the people that founded Iron Mace. Uh, however, considering the size and stake of, in Iron Mace and the way that they acquired it, it is evaluated that there is little ground to believe that P3 became Dark and Darker by instigating it from behind. This is the loose translation from, or the auto auto translate from Crub. Um, and what they're basically saying is here is that there's very little evidence that the two former CEOs that worked for, for Iron Mace were trying to acquire Dark and Darker and steal P3 from, from Nexon. There's just very little evidence of it, but the whole article before this is basically giving opinion that what they what they claim at the very bottom is true, right? So the first 90% of the article is them talking shit on Iron Mace saying that they sought out investment from these evil former CEOs and they were trying to steal P3 from Nexon. And then at the very bottom, they say, well, there's not a lot of evidence that this is true, right? Um, and this was added after the fact. This is added after Kira had already reported on it. This is added after, I think one pig might have reported on this as well. There's several other YouTubers that have reported based off of this. And there's several, this article is linked and cited by like 10 other Korean media agencies from this one article. Um, and they got a lot of this information from Blind, which is all proven to be bullshit. Like, they themselves say that there's not a lot of, a lot of evidence that anything that they're saying is even true. Um, but yeah, it's been edited since the time of release. Uh, it's been cited by a ton of other media outlets, including very popular YouTubers. Uh, the fact that they're putting out half-ass retraction, uh, retraction notices at the top and bottom, bottom of the article is hilarious to me. Um, to me, it means that whatever legal team at Iron Mace has, or whatever the legal team at Iron Mace has, is starting to put pressure on all of these unsubstantiated claims, uh, because they're going to want to try to get control of this wild speculation mill that's happening, right? They want to get all of these rumors out of the way. Um, it's either that, or maybe the media is realizing, oh shit, um, Iron Mace might win this, and if they do, we could be held financially liable for defamation. Right, so I've been seeing more and more retractions come up on Korean Korean media outlets, but this is weeks after the initial pub or days or weeks after the initial publication. The damage has already been done, um, but there's a lot of retractions going up in in Korean news in the Korean media. Um, a lot of the blind posts are finding to be not so true. Um, so I think a lot of people are kind of wising up to the fact that you can't just say a bunch of random bullshit without being held accountable for it later. Um, but whatever the situation is, the from a large majority of the Korean media 
doesn't really have any evidence or anything relevant to the court case um, itself. Like, it's just not relevant. And even if, like, these two CEOs colluded with Iron Mace and gave them a bunch of money, it doesn't really have an impact on the court case itself. Um, and right here I go into the only evidence they provide for Iron Mace's funding shows that two executives of, the, of Iron Mace and their families are the primary investors of the studio. This is true. Uh, they raised over $150,000 from themselves and family members to fund the game. Um, everything else is kind of inconsequential, incon inconsequential about this article. Uh, and again, whoever funds this, whoever funds the company doesn't really matter. It has no impact on the court case, at least from what I know. Um, and then on what's going on with Blind and these leaked information from Nexon, I'm going to keep this part kind of short. Almost everything being said in Korean media and on, on Blind is just completely unsubstantiated. There's no evidence, there's no proof, there's no receipts. It's just opinion and, and hearsay uh, based on nothing but thin air. And it quite literally doesn't deserve any space. So I'm not going to link any examples. I'm not going to just put, I'm not going to share unsubstantiated articles that don't link to any proof and then are later being retracted. Um, it just doesn't feel right to me. I'm not going to give them clicks, right? Uh, and my reasoning for for this is because NCSoft pulled the same shit when they sued Bluehole. And Bluehole actually was found, or not Bluehole, but in Blue, Bluehole employees were found guilty of theft. Um, but the they laid out a bunch of wild claims and leaked emails and leaked from, like, supposed employee to employee emails talking about how terrible Blue Hole was and how they hate those former employees for leaving and all this crazy shit that was very similar to what Nexon's doing. Um, and it was all about optics and public opinion. And I think that, you know, it was all about optics and public opinion then. It's all about optics and public opinion now. Uh, very little that came out about Blue Hole was ever used in courts. Why? Uh, because this type of coverage is and coverage on opinion-based information is less about swaying any jury and more about making Iron Mace or your opponent look bad, right? You want to make them look like the bad guy in the, the realm of, of the public arena. Um, but it's not, about the, it's not about the legal case. And the reason for that is because Korea doesn't even use juries. But beyond that, correction, so like, but Nexon doesn't need facts or proof. They just need to make Iron Mace look as bad as quickly as possible. And the reasoning for that is money, in my opinion. Before we get into the money aspect, I want to talk about why we shouldn't worry about any of this weird public opinion nonsense affecting the court case. And it's, you know, here's my proof that Koreans don't really use, they have a jury system, but they don't use it. In America, you know, people try to, to do these public hit pieces, like in large court case, in large newsworthy court cases, because you can sway the jury before they ever sit down, right? If everybody knows who person X is and everybody knows about the court case before it even happens and then they pull in jur uh, jurors, those jurors might go in with a preconceived notion that the person is guilty or innocent. So in America, it's actually a tactic played by a lot of lawyers to sway public opinion and to taint the jury pool, right? Um, that happens a lot in the United States with big court cases. Um, but it doesn't happen in Korea because they don't use the jury as much. So here I go into, you know, Korea only adopted a jury system in 2008, uh, and it's been used extremely rarely since. And then I have a link to a scholarly article uh, in a, it's a PDF format. So if you click on it, it will down, automatically download a, a PDF. Um, but here's an excerpt that I pulled from the PDF. Jury trials were induced, introduced and enforced in South Korea as of 2008 in order to increasing, in order to increasing democrat, democratic legitimacy, kind of weirdly translated, and trust for the judiciary, yet it's facing challenges, specifically low implementation rates and high ex exclusion rates. Uh, potential reasons for this, these issues are limitations inherent to the system, low awareness and among the public, and the tendencies of law professionals to avoid jury trials. 
you could look more into this as you want, but here's my receipt. They don't use it. This is a scholarly article from Korea um, going asking why they don't use juries more. Um, the people, when polled, want to use more juries and be more like a Western court system, but the legal professionals in Korea don't like it. So yeah, public opinion kind of means nothing because you can't taint a jury. And then if you taint a judge, it can actually end up messing with the case itself because if the jury goes in with a with a bias leaning one way or the other and either side finds out the judge has to recuse themselves or they face an immediate mistrial and that then that trial gets thrown out it works very similarly in the united states right if a judge goes into a case automatically thinking person x is a murderer and then they find that person guilty of murder based on very little evidence, it's super suspicious and it could lead to a mistrial, right? And if the person being accused of murder finds out that the judge went into the case with conviction already in hand, then they have a case not only to have the whole case thrown out, but it could force all kinds of other crazy situations to where the, the case isn't tried at all. So. This tactic is actually very risky for Nexon, because if they do manage to taint a judge against Iron Mace and it gets out of hand, um, they risk a mistrial. It's highly unlikely that that happens. To be perfectly honest, I don't think a judge is watching, a Korean judge is watching video game websites or even knows or cares about Dark and Darker or Nexon. So, it, but it isn't, it is possible, but it's very rare and it probably won't happen. Now, with all that out of the way, let's let's look at why Nexon might want to sway public opinion. I'm going to give a little preface here by saying that this is speculation. Uh, I might want to put on a tinfoil hat. This is going into the realm of conspiracy, doing the same thing that the Korean media is doing. But it does make a lot of sense to me, and this is actually happened before there are cases of this actually happening in the US and in Korea, right? So, so this is a little bit more spe speculative than I like to get, especially on videos like this, but one of the easiest ways to starve people of funds for legal battle is to paint them as toxic. Most major sources of initial funding for video games and other like movies and stuff like that come and books and stuff come from publishers and venture capitalists. And those are local publishers and venture capitalists. So if Nexon wants to starve Iron Mace of funding, one of the easiest way to do, ways to do this would be to paint them as the bad guys as early as possible. This has already worked in their favor as all major investors have already removed offers. Um, there's more and more people saying, hey, well, maybe, you know, I'm seeing all this information out of Korea now. Maybe Iron Mace is the bad guys, right? Maybe I won't fund the GoFundMe. Um, so it could have an impact on crowd for crowdfunding for the legal case. The more people who take ne Nexon's side in this, the less people fund the GoFundMe and the more information misinformation is spread, right? The more people who agree with Nexon because of misinformation, the more information, the more that same inf misinformation is spread and the less people fund the GoFundMe's, right? So it's a pretty simple pro like speculation, but whether this is actually their intent or not, I have no proof, so I wouldn't take that as fact. That's wild speculation based on my part. Um, but yeah, it's they think it's pretty simple, right? If Iron Mace is bad, people don't donate, um, and Iron Mace can't find investors. Therefore, they don't have money to fight the case, or and might settle, or give up their IP, because you know, as we saw earlier, Nexon may or may not have actually tried to settle already and take just take dark and darker from iron mace um but to me that's what this entire case is about right it's not about what's right it's not about protecting AAA studios ip it's not about nexon seeing a project that they shelved have a real shot at success it's it's about money it's about money and they want a piece of the pie for dark and darker that's really all it is otherwise this wouldn't be happening if they didn't care about the financial ramifications to this, they wouldn't be trying this. And, you know, sure, what Iron Mace may or may not have done is pretty sketchy. Um, and 
them, the simple fact that they all left and started a similar game is unquestionably the wrong way to handle this situation. They should have changed way more stuff than they did. Iron Mace did fuck up, and people might face very real criminal charges for it. Mr. Choi might go to prison, right? He might lose his house, his car, his bank accounts, and go to prison. But at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. Whether they what they did is wrong, uh, or if it was sketchy, or if Mr. Choi does go to jail, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the truth of the situation and what happens to Dark and Darker. So, and what happens to Iron Maze. So, with that said, please be patient. Don't believe everything you hear on the internet. Even when it's YouTubers who usually do really good work, like, just don't buy everything that people are selling, right? Um, we all want to know what's going on with Dark and Darker. Over 2 million people have a vested interest in this court case because they want to play the game that they love. I'm for sure one of those people, but it's important to be patient and wait for things to play out. Please don't huff the copium too hard, but also don't believe it, everything that people are saying. Unless people are showing receipts, it's not really important. Um, going too, too far either way is just a recipe for disappointment. But yeah, that's about all I have for, for today's video. I'm going to go over some more stuff. I kind of just wanted to get this speculation and stuff out of the way. If you like what, I, what I've been doing over the past few, few days, if you like these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, again, I'm making my own video. I'm, I'm making my own video game. I'm going to say a little bit more about it. It's a dungeon. It's a multiplayer online RPG that has dungeon crawler aspects to it um the easiest way to kind of explain it would be something like ultima online it's much smaller in scale with elements of dark and darker dungeon crawling without the circle closing it on you and what i want to one of the main features is that i'm gonna have multiple dungeons that have various exits and entrances that relate to an, a larger open world. So essentially, if you go into, say you started the main city and you go into the dungeon there, you could go directly from that dungeon to another dungeon that has multiple floors and then go from an exit from that dungeon to another dungeon and basically perpetually live in the dungeons. And they're instanced, but they're also public with player caps. So like anywhere from 15 to 20 players can be in a dungeon at a time. Um, and there's always on PvP, so with partial loot. And the way that the partial loot system works is that there's an equipment system that doesn't drop, and then you have a stash that only holds a certain amount of items. Um, and then you have a backpack, and your backpack just straight up falls on the ground when you die, uh, and can be looted by anybody. But there's also a criminal system. I'll get more into that later in a, in a in video specific to my video game. I don't want to pitch my stuff at the end of dark end of dark and darker content but yeah we have we don't have funding yet so that might have to wait um but there is opportunity for funding sometime in the near future i just have to get my mvp my minimum viable product out but yeah i'll get into that in another video you guys have a wonderful day like subscribe leave your leave some messages in the comments below you guys have a wonderful rest of your day